All right, in this video, I want to go over some of the most common algebra mistakes I see and that I absolutely hate, absolutely bother me. So my point is if I address them, if I bring them up, and if I show you these common mistakes, hopefully you will never, ever, ever make them. Here is probably the number one most common mistake that I see kids make. They see a plus b, an expression in parentheses, squared, and they think that that means a squared plus b squared. Please, that is absolutely incorrect. You need to actually do one of two things. You could actually take a plus b and multiply it by itself, because that's what squaring means, and then use the FOIL method. a times a is a squared. On the outside is an ab. On the inside is another ab, and on the very far last term, b times b is b squared. So when you combine this, you get a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. Or you could just use the binomial square theorem. The binomial square theorem is just simply a rule that allows you to remember this. It's just the first guy squared and the last guy squared. And then in the middle, you just double these two values. So you just take a times b, and then you just double it. So that's what you get. So you get 2ab. So that's obviously how you get that same answer. The binomial square theorem is just a way to remember that. a squared plus 2ab, just multiply those two values together, and then add the b squared as well. So that's probably the most common mistake that I see. Um, other mistakes that I see a lot of are, um, let's see, you're dealing with fractions, okay? Um, for example, um, I'll see a lot of kids that will have like a over b plus c. Now, b plus c is uh, any is an expression, so you can't cancel it out. It's there. It is the denominator. So that's really about all you could do. I'll get kids that will try to do a over b plus a over c, and that is just absolutely incorrect. I mean, realistically, this is about as far as you can go. There's nothing that you can cancel out. That's what it is. Now, and this leads me to the third mistake I see kids make. They'll do something like this. If they have 3x over x plus 2. They'll think, oh, I could cancel out these x's. Cancel out this x with this x, and I'm left with 3 over 2. That's absolutely not true whatsoever. Remember, when you're working with fractions, the only way something can cancel is if the exact same expression in terms of a product, multiplication, is above it. So, if I have x plus 2 on top, and then I have x plus 2 times x plus 3 on the bottom. Since this is multiplication, this x plus 2 is being multiplied, this x plus 2 is technically also being multiplied by 1, so there is multiplication going on on the top and the bottom. That's when these x plus 2's can cancel, and you're left with 1, that's the 1 that was involved in multiplication on top, and the x plus 3 on the bottom. That's it. Don't try to um, cancel out more than you can, please, okay? So be very, 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 very careful with that. Um, another very common mistake is just kids that don't use common denominators. Um, for example, if I have 1 over A plus 1 over, whoop, that was supposed to be a 1. Let me erase that real quick. Uh, plus 1 over B. Um, you have to get a common denominator. I'll get kids that just say, oh, that's 1 over a plus b. That is not true. You cannot just add those together. You've got to get a common denominator. So you have to first say, okay, my common denominator would be a times b. a times b. This guy has the a, so I will multiply him by b to get that common denominator, but that means I've got to multiply the top by b. 1 times b is b. Over here, this guy needs the a. That way, b times a is a times b. means I also got to multiply, multiply the top by a. So 1 times a is a. So I end up with b plus a over a plus b. Now, I'll get kids who will do this, but then they'll try to cancel out the a's and b's. Once again, you can't. You can only cancel out through multiplication. Yes, this a is being multiplied by the b on the bottom, but on top, it's addition. So you cannot cancel those values out. So hopefully, that makes a lot of sense. Next up is some very, very common exponent rules that kids mess up. Um, for example, a, uh, x to the third squared. This is where you multiply, not add. So I'll get kids that will think this means x to the fifth. They just used the wrong rule. Absolutely not. This is x cubed taken twice. So that really means you have x to the sixth. So that's why this is the multiplication rule, 3 times 2. Same thing, here's another one that's very similar. 
x to the third times x to the second. A lot of kids will say this is x to the sixth. They'll multiply. Well, this is the instance where you're supposed to add because this isn't a power to a power. This is three x's and two more x's. So this would be x to the fifth. x times x times x times x times x, so x to the fifth. So make sure you don't mess up any of those simple rules there as well. Um, next up are some very, very common rules with square roots. Um, remember the square root of 5x. This can be written as the square root of 5 times the square root of x. They're both inside the square root. Multiplication can be broken up, but not addition. If this was 5 plus x, this is not equal to the square root of 5 plus the square root of x. The x plus 5 is a quantity. Anytime, remember, think about terms. Anytime you're separated by a plus sign or a minus sign, you are terms. Terms can be broken up to 5 times x. That's 5 times x. But an expression like 5 plus x, those are two terms. They kind of get stuck together as an expression, as a quantity that are held together there. Okay? So please be very careful with that. Other things to be careful of is be careful just on where parentheses are when you're dealing with exponents. For example, if I have 2x to the third, this means because of the parentheses that the 2 gets cubed and the x gets cubed. And that would be 2 times 2, which is 4, times 2 is 8. So this would be 8x cubed. Now, if I just have 2x cubed, no parentheses, this cubed is only on the x, not the 2. So that 2 stays, well, just 2. So please be very, very careful with that rule as well. Um, like I said, though, the dividing out with fractions is probably where we see the most mistakes. Mostly, fractions cannot be reduced. They have to be extremely, extremely careful to be reduced. I'll give you another quick example here. If I have 3x over 5x squared. Okay. Now, there's all multiplication going on. This is 3 times x. This is 5 times x times another x, or shortened as 5x squared. Now, because it's all multiplication, this x right here can be canceled with one of these x's on the bottom. So it would almost be written like this, 3x times 5xx. X. Now, this x on top can cancel out with either of these x's on the bottom, leaving behind a final answer of 3 over 5x. So just be very, very careful that you don't try to cancel out more than you can. Then kids, you know, kind of turn things over to fractions as well, and they think that these same rules can be applied. So for example, if I have a plus bx, all divided by a, they say, oh, those a's can cancel. No, they can't. They absolutely cannot be canceled. Um, you can cancel them only if you break this down. So if you break this down to a over a plus bx over a. Remember, this is all divided by a. That means a gets divided by a and the bx gets divided by a. So yes, now that I separated it, the a's can cancel and that would just leave me with 1. But I still have the bx over a on this side. Again, the A cancels out with the A, but not with the BX. So you cannot cancel that all out together. So again, just be very, very careful on that. Um, here's another one that actually looks a little bit similar. Uh, it's A plus AX over A. Here's some kids will say, well, wait a minute, uh, everything cancels. I can just cancel everything out. I see all these A's. Well, again, you have to treat it part by part. I'll show you two ways to do it. You treat the first A gets divided by A, and the AX also gets divided by A. So in this case, the uh, A's cancel, and I do just get 1. And over here, the A's cancel, and I do just get X there. Okay, but you've got to be very, very careful. So I get 1 plus x. These a's here completely go away. a over a makes 1. Um, so just be careful when you're breaking apart the fractions. The other thing you can do is you can actually factor out the top. And I could pull out an a. If I pull out an a, I get 1 plus x. And again, you could double check that work by distribution. a times 1 is a. a times x is ax. All divided by a. Now what I've done is I've created multiplication. I now have a times some expression, this expression of 1 plus x. Now this a on the bottom is also involved in multiplication. If you don't believe me, just throw a 1 in front. So I have multiplication on top. I have multiplication on the bottom. Both of the a's are involved in multiplication. So those a's can cancel each other out. And I'm left with 
1 plus x over 1. Now, obviously, I don't necessarily need that over 1, because anything over 1 is itself, but I end up with that 1 plus x. So those are some of the most common mistakes I see working with um, the different rules. But like I said, I cannot stress enough, the one that bothers me absolutely the most is this very first one I showed you. Um, just be very, very careful, please, that you don't make that mistake. Let me give you one more example here. If I have something like 3x plus 5y quantity squared. Square the first guy. This 3x right here gets squared. 3x squared becomes 9x squared. Square the back guy. If you want to do that first, go ahead. If that becomes 25y squared. But now you don't forget about the middle term. The easiest binomial way is just to say, hey, 3x times 5x is 15xy. If you need to write that down, go ahead. But then you double it. Doubling that gives me 30xy on the inside. Most kids forget about that inside term. Please don't forget about it.